Hey everybody, welcome to Foraging for Balance. I'm Jackie, and I'd like to take you on a little tour of what we've got going on here in our yard. Starting here in the front of our house, we have a ton of black raspberry plants. These little buggers are delicious. Okay, that one didn't work so well. There's one. My daughter and I come out here every morning and just chow down. So delicious and way better than those ugly bushes that people normally have in front of their house. In the back of our house, between the patio and the house, we have this big pile of chocolate mint. Coming over here is our Cadillac of chicken coops that my husband built. And inside are two of our girls just raring to get out. So let's meet. So let's meet Rosie and Josie. Here they come. First coming out is Rosie. Come on, Rosie. Come on, Rosie. They're going, why is she just standing there? And there's Josie. So those are our girls. They're a couple years old. Since Rosie and Josie are a couple years old and not as good at laying as they used to be, we've got these two darlings this spring. This is Andrea and Olivia, or Andy and Ollie for short. They're a little shy. They have to go out to a day pen with a cover. We have a lot of hawks and owls that will come and eat these poor babies if we just let them free. Moving over, we have a black currant bush. And you can see it is just loaded right now and we need to harvest those. Um, if you like black currants, tell me what you like to do with them. Because we are not really sure yet what we like to do with them. Moving over this year, we added a red currant bush, although there are no currants. Um, it made about three of them, and I think the birds ate them. So there it is, but I love red currants. I just eat them right off the bush. Delicious. Moving towards the back fence. There's a little bit of a jungle right now. We need to cut some stuff back. We have some broom corn. That is for a special Christmas present, hopefully, if everything works out. And next to it, we have the jungle of sunchokes. If you don't know about sunchokes, you should look it up or we'll make a video all about them later this year. Super easy to grow. Super easy to grow and you eat the underground part. They're pretty tasty. I have a little barrel with some strawberry plants. There's still a couple strawberries waiting to ripen on there. Our other strawberries are all done for the year. Over here is part of my rhubarb jungle. Uh, next year I need to dig those up and spread them out a little further. They're a little too close together and they kind of strangle each other out. This is our beehive. It's a little cool because it's still in the morning, so they're a little slow getting in and out of there. But they are alive and well, and we can't wait to eat tons of yummy honey from there. On to my garden beds. I admittedly am not that good of a gardener, um, but I'm trying and getting a little better every year. So in here we have a variety of things. We have some a basil plant that came from our CSA. We have several kale plants. My daughter absolutely loves kale chips. We have peas. Um, some of those are ready to be picked. And dill. Dill. Um, 
which I need to pick and get drying. Don't know if you know this, but once you plant dill, you'll pretty much have it forever. Just let one go to seed and you'll find dill everywhere. Next door in this planter bed, we have some delicious carrots growing. They look big and vigorous. There's another one of those sneaky dill plants. Another kale and one of our chive plants. And there's something planted here. I don't remember what, but I filled something in here. So soon something should grow. Over here, I have got beans along the edges. And then in the center are two zucchini plants. Of course, there's some more of that rogue dill. So delicious with our salmon that we get from a salmon CSA. <sighs> This is my garlic bed. So on my left side, I have four hardneck garlics growing and they grow these garlic scapes. They're called, you can cut these off and you can just chop this up and use it like you would garlic in your recipe. Um, otherwise, it'll get tiny little bulbils. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Tiny little garlic bulby things will grow in here and then you can plant those but then it takes about two to three years for those to grow into a harvestable garlic. But I'm willing to wait because that's a cheap way to do it. It'll propagate itself. Uh, moving over. I'm not entirely sure what's in here. Um, I planted some butternut squash, I planted some melons, and I don't entirely remember which one I planted where. I think these are the squash, but we'll just have to wait and see what pops up. Over here, we've got two more of those glorious zucchini plants. I know some people get sick of zucchini. But I don't know how. There's so many ways to use it. It's fantastic. Um, also, there should be something growing along here. But for some reason, nothing I plant along there is popping up. I've tried two different things and they just refuse to grow. In here, we have got some more of that dill. There is a little oregano. This is its third year. And in the center, something is coming up. Um, again, I'm not entirely sure which squash plant. I think these are pumpkin plants in here. Um, my daughter picked out some pumpkin plants, some ugly fuglies or something of the sort. So we'll see how those turn out. <laughs> If you have never seen asparagus go to seed, this is what it looks like. This giant, frilly, ferny, sort of dill-like jungle. That is my husband's asparagus bed. I am not a fan, but him and my daughter love it. Chow it down. Next to the asparagus bed, I'm going to back this up. giant it's my giant giant red raspberry bed fortunately they are not yet ready to eat so we'll have to give it a couple weeks before we can get some red berries there's also some more rhubarb over here well, looks like it's making a comeback it had kind of died back but it's going strong right now here are the rest of the strawberries I told you about. So we have this little planter bed filled with strawberries. They were delicious, but they're pretty much done for the year. There's a few stragglers hanging out in here. Uh, there's one. So we'll get a few more strawberries yet this year. This bed 
let me tell you about this. Hey, I planted stuff over here that is again not growing. There's another chive plant. This is a different kind. I believe this is our garlic chives. And next to this, you might recognize this and call it a weed. This is wood sorrel. Um, it has little heart-shaped leaves. And they are edible. It's delicious. It's a little bit tart. You should try it out sometime. What I'm most excited about in this plot? Walking onion. I've wanted to get it for a few years, but it seems like they're always sold out in the seed catalog or they don't have it available because of some sort of overwintering issue. But if you like onions, but you're a lazy gardener like me, it's fantastic. This one's a great example. So it grows these tiny little onion bulbs on the top and you can just eat those. They're fantastic. Otherwise, if you let them, you'll see this one, they'll sprout and eventually this will flop over into the ground. Here's one that kind of fell off and I put in the ground and it starts to grow and it'll grow another one. So they'll spread and you can eat, like you said, you can eat the little bulbs that grow on the top. You could chop off these and eat them like a green onion chive kind of thing. Or you can actually dig up the onion bulb that's growing underground and eat that as well. Um, I'm not going to dig up my underground bulbs right now because I want them to spread and kind of fill this whole area. Behind me we have our out of control apple tree. But you will see there are plenty of apples on it. And this year we have gotten um, a press, so we can, a cider press. So we will be turning some of these into apple cider. Last but not least in our garden is my herb garden. We put this in last year. You can see it's totally out of control at the moment. Mint spreads like crazy. So we have got pe peppermint and spearmint. Oh. We've got peppermint and spearmint. Um, again, here's some of those chives. This guy is some cilantro and there is also some cilantro up here as well as chamomile. And this guy is lemon balm. It's related to mint. Um, has a lemony taste. It's great for tea. I find the tea very calming. And sage. Pile of sage. So make lots of stuffing. Um, you can make smudge sticks. Okay, everybody. Thanks for watching and seeing my glorious mini homesteading activities take... <sighs> All right, let's try again. Hey everybody, thanks for watching and taking my little tour of my backyard and my current homesteading activities. Hope you enjoyed the video and there'll be more to come. Thank you.